And then the third is COVID as an incidental finding. So somebody coming in with a gunshot wound or a heart attack and they happen to test positive. You know who would really benefit from being able to label gunshot wounds as COVID? Oh, no. Yeah, who's this? It's Vinny. Vinny, what happened? Did we get straight out? Nah, we had a problem. And we tried to do everything we could do. What do you mean? You know what I mean? He's gone. He got COVID-19. And there was nothing anybody could do about it. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't believe Tommy had COVID. I don't believe it. Okay, so we have Dr. Leanna Wen, who on CNN, well, actually it wasn't on CNN. She wrote an op-ed for, for the Washington Post. I'm going to show you a couple clips from CNN trying to give her an avenue to back away from, from her op-ed. And she doesn't, she doesn't. She kind of she kind of opens it up even more. And then this, of course, has the right going crazy. Uh, we knew this, we knew this, we knew this. But what she stated in her op-ed was that COVID deaths are being overreported and significantly overreported. And she states that based on talking to a couple of um, a couple of epidemiologists, one who's an expert in infectious diseases. That person was Robert Henry Drettler. Uh, the other was uh, Toshira Dorn. I'll quote Dr. Drettler from the op-ed that she put out in the Washington Post. And he said this, since every hospitalized patient gets tested for COVID, many are incidentally positive. A gunshot victim or someone who had a heart attack, for example, could test positive for the virus but the infection has no bearing on why they sought medical care. Now, many of you have heard that argument made back in the early days of the pandemic. And it's Dr. Shira Doran, uh, who also is an epidemiologist. She wants to get to the bottom of this, which is where they should have been three years ago, right? Her method, and she's come up with a method that they can look for medical records of COVID patients that use and, and, find, and find the use of the steroid dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is a common steroid that when a patient comes in because of COVID, they are issued at least one dose of dexamethasone. That would be a good indicator of how many people actually came in because of COVID, right? And maybe that steroid is issued to other people as well for different things, but clearly its most popular use is for that. So the number means like no one's asking for a down to the exact number, right? But we want an idea of the reality of the situation we're dealing with because it's paramount. And when put on CNN, that's what that's what Dr. Liana Wen was saying. And here's what she says. I talked to a lot of health officials about this who are actually kind of skeptical of this claim that you're making. And I think one big thing has been what is the evidence that these COVID deaths are actually being overcounted? Well, this is the reason why this kind of transparent reporting is going to be so important. So... <laughs> So I, I start. I stopped it there for a second because I just want you to notice two things. One, the talking head on on this Don Don Lamont show is she starts up by saying, "I've talked to a lot of medical professionals." Like, no, you haven't. <laughs> no, you haven't. You're talking to a medical professional. You haven't talked to a lot. And this, they always do this though because what she's about to follow up with is CNN's talking point as opposed to asking a legitimate question as to why Dr. Wen feels this way. And, and so Dr. Wen then goes on and says, this is why this type of transparency is important so that we can find evidence. And, and that's the point. She asked her, well, where's the evidence for this? So she, not only did she, how do I know she didn't talk to health professionals? Because she didn't even read the op-ed. Like she's reading, she's talking about this based on what she heard on Twitter and from other people. She never actually pulled up the dang op-ed and read it, because if she did, she would know Dr. Wen never presented evidence in that sense. Her statement was just, this is the observation that we as medical professionals are seeing in our hospitals, and we need a method of recording this better. That's what they were saying. That was the point of the op-ed. But these people don't even know that. So instead, they come in with a narrative like, we're going to knock this girl down. And you know what? And, and, and this is how we're going to do it. And I'm going to start off by, by justifying myself by adding on fictitious virologists and, and epidemiologists onto my back that, that I've never asked a damn thing to because I've never even read the op-ed and I don't even know what the hell I mean, why I'm even in this room asking you a question. Now, Dr. Wen still is 
thinks that she can reason with these people. <laughs> so this it's always fun to watch one wake up on national television. So she still thinks that she can reason with them. Like she still thinks that she can explain this to them in a way, in small pieces, even in a way that, that they could understand, like that will fit in with their programming. But then, you know, she learns that that's not necessarily the case when the rest of the world attack her. But but here she is trying to explain, we can track this, but we haven't been, and we need to be. There is a way for us to look at death certificates and also to look at the medical records of individuals prior to their death. And I think this needs to be separated into three categories. All right, so she's basically letting this woman know, like, you're asking for evidence for something that no one proposed you know, no one proposed that they had evidence for, and nor should they have. You're asking for evidence based on an observation that we want to collect evidence to find out if it's valid, because it sure as hell seems like it is. Dr. Drettler had mentioned in the op-ed, and he was quoted on this by Dr. By Dr. Wen, that up to 90% of the people that come in and, and, and are classified as, as hospitalized for COVID are not. That's a lot of people. And at the, towards the end of the op-ed, they, they, they say, look, even if we settle for 30 percent being off, that number is still too high. But, but here's, the, here, here's the, the next point that she makes. So she's going to break this down into three categories. All right. Three categories that are going to sound very familiar to anybody who's paying attention during the, the pandemic. One is the um, the COVID as a direct contributor, the primary cause of death. The second is, could it be a secondary contributing cause? So, for example, somebody with kidney disease, COVID then pushes them over the edge to have kidney failure. That's COVID as a contributing cause. And then the third is COVID as an incidental finding. So somebody coming in with a gunshot wound or a heart attack and they happen to test positive. You know who would really benefit from being able to label gunshot wounds? As COVID? Oh, no. Yeah, who's this? It's Vinny. Vinny, what happened? Well, Everything we got straight out? Nah, we had a problem. And we tried to do everything we could do. What do you mean? You know what I mean? He's gone. He got COVID-19. And there was nothing anybody could do about it. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't believe Tommy had COVID. I don't believe it. So she's saying that these are three categories that we should be breaking it down into, which is something that we've heard all throughout the pandemic. But what's baffling is that no one ever took the time to do this. And again, the Dr. Shira Doran portion of, of that op-ed was stating, was explaining how she was actually doing this actively now. And please believe me, just Google this or just YouTube it, and you'll find all the, the leftist media attacking it, debunking it. Look at my doctor. My doctor's better than this doctor. Listen to this doctor. Like, you know, because you know who owns the science. Um, you know, we own the science, and we think that the world, you know, should know it. Again, they were never making the statement of, of scientific discovery. They were making a simple observation. You show up at work every day. A woman that walks in with a green dress, and when she walks out, she has a red dress, and you're wondering, why is this woman, you know, it's just an observation. And then you see it happen to a lot of women that are walking in with green dresses and walking out with red dresses. And now you're wondering, that's strange. And as a scientist, you want to figure out why. That This is really the same type of scenario. They're just seeing, I'm not accepting all these patients that are being hospitalized for COVID. So why are they all getting added up in the statistics for that? And they want to be able to get an accurate number. So attacking them for not having evidence and making it like it's nonsense. That she's simply waking up for a moment and trying to wrap her head around the fact that things just for a second don't make sense to her. So she wants to ask a question. And how dare she? How dare you? What was valuable was was the end part where she realizes after this exchange that this isn't going anywhere that she apparently has committed some crime and, and will have to deal with these types of attacks. So she casually starts to talk it back. And, and what gets disturbing in the way she talks it back, because she's really just throwing fodder to the CNN hosts to try and get them to spin this in a better way for her. But what she, she uses the word probably quite often. Listen to how she's talking and then get an idea for how much our medical professionals actually knew during during 
how, like how much of this was people were actually paying attention to these very things that she's calling out now when it mattered. I think that we need to separate out and look at the percentages of each. That percentage would have shifted over time as well. In the beginning, probably a lot more people were dying with the primary cause of COVID. That probably has shifted. And I think, again, we need to understand this. Another reason to understand this, too, is a lot of people are wondering when they should get a booster next. When do we need a second booster or another booster? So she throws in the booster comments at the end, right? Like, I still love the vaccine, right? But but then... You hear how many times she uses the word probably, right? So, I mean, it's probably shifted over time. It, in, in the beginning, there were probably more people, you know, being hospitalized because of COVID. But she doesn't say there were more people getting hospitalized because of COVID. She's not willing to go there. Like, this is where the science and med medicine come in, where she's not willing to say, yes, that was a fact. Why? Because she has no data on that. She has no data like the data that she's asking for right now. Like she's asking that we go back and we look at all of these situations. They're never going to do this all the way back to 2020. But in the end, that's what that's what she's saying. So she has to keep using the word probably. And the entire reason she does that, at least it seems that way, was to appease them, was to be like, hey, guys, come on. Look, I made a mistake. I stepped out of line. Right. I, and, and we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, you know, whether she feels like. She stepped out of line and is going to allow herself to get knocked back in or if she continues to ask questions because it's a it's a different there's a difference between the two. But she definitely got her dose. She knows now that there is a message. If she didn't know before, she knows now. Don't don't you go getting all science on us. We're, we're just you know, we have science. We own the science. Um, you know, we own the science. You know, we just need you to validate that and, and stay in line. We'll see if she how she responds to this. I will say there was another op-ed after that she put out another one explaining the previous one, but then her next one <laughs> was critical of a pharmaceutical company, a pharmaceutical company. So it, not about COVID. It was, it was critical about, um, about drugs for opioids, why they weren't made more available and whatnot. And, and so that was interesting to see because I didn't go deep into that, but just the progression of article of op-eds that she's been putting out, it almost seems like you can watch her eyes open on that on on you know in in that op-ed. So it's it's an interesting thing to see. You make it make up your own mind. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. You know, let me know you know where you stand with all this personally. I think this should have been done three years ago. What what it, it was all common sense. What she's saying now is common sense, and that's why I say I think she's waking up a little bit. Because I think she said it, she wrote that op-ed without thinking this was going to be controversial, and it is. And now she's wondering why. And this is where the questions begin. This is how your eyes open. I pray for Dr. Wen. I hope that she asks more questions. I hope that she starts to, you know, peek her head down there a little bit more down that rabbit hole and get an idea for just exactly who her friends are and, and what she, what's required of her to keep them, at least professionally. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated if anything big happens with it. Don't forget tomorrow, 5.30 p.m., every Wednesday night, Wednesday Night Live. We'll be, I should have Big Rube with me tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and go over some current, current affair issues. We'll talk about this issue as well. Um, so bring your comments. Hope, hopefully we get to see you there. Until then, I'm out. And like that.